All right, welcome to the Next Level Life Show. I'm your host, Bill Hargenrader. I'm here today with an amazing guest, uh, a good friend, uh, Mike Rosbrook. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Bill, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. All right, glad to have you here. So well, I'm gonna start things off by, as per usual, reading your, your bio, but then we're gonna get right into your, your story, your entrepreneurial journey. We're gonna help people out with um, uh, some tips on starting their journey, okay. taking their entrepreneurial business to the next level, and then also some tips in your area of expertise uh, which you'll you'll get to in a second, but uh, okay. the bio here: Michael Rosbrook is a nationally recognized entrepreneur and is the founder of Michael Rosbrook's Tax and Business Solutions Academy, a training and consulting service company that trains and helps other CPAs, attorneys, and enrolled agents, as well as other professionals, uh, to build highly profitable practices through proven marketing systems and strategies. But he doesn't stop there. He also trains on how to close the sale manage the client relationship, and he knows firsthand how a best practice IRS problem client niche practice should be run and operated. Michael lives in Los Angeles, California, He's married to the love of his life for 30 years now, uh, who works alongside him managing their, their company day to day. Um, I work alongside my wife. I know how uh, fun <laughs> and amazing that, that can be. Yep. Um, so I'm happy for you in that regard. So Michael, why don't you just um, tell a little bit about your story, how you got started and where you're at now? Sure. Thanks, Bill. Um, it's kind of like a you know, there's no straight path, that's for sure. My, my path is probably unusual, but I think most everyone's is. Um, you know, I, I, I started in the corporate world right out of college. I, I, I graduated college and started as, here's the unusual thing, uh, as an accountant, as a CPA, I did not work one day of my life in public accounting. Okay, so right from the start, I did something off the beaten path. Yeah, yeah. Most people went and worked for, you know, the big four CPA firms or something like that. I went to private industry uh, and I started, I started at the bottom. I started as a staff accountant for a company called, a little company called Hitachi America Limited. And uh, it was in, in Manhattan. I was the only American out of an 11 member Japanese accounting department. Wow. And it was very cool because they treated me like one of their own. And I got so much experience. They took me to the banks to get bank loans. I mean, they really gave me a tremendous amount of experience. And uh, long story short, they sent me out here to Southern California. I was living in New York uh, to put in a cost accounting system. Now, mind you, this is in 1979. There's no computers. Uh, there's no internet. There's no nothing. So the cost accounting system I put in was on index cards. That's wow. what we did back then. <laughs> anyway, I was there for a month in March, never west of the Mississippi. It was 75 degrees. They put me in a Ramada Inn on Hermosa Beach, uh, in Hermosa Beach, and it was all over. I went back to New York, asked for a transfer. My boss said no. I uh, gave two-week notice and moved out. There you go. And uh, I worked my way up to the corporate world from staff accountant to CFO. And uh, I never was good at the corporate game. I was never really good at politics. And for a prior four or five years, prior to 1998, when I had my epiphany, I was moving around from job to job, trying to find that perfect job, trying to make more money. Um, and then uh, in May, actually it was May 17th, 1998, I get called into my boss's office. And because uh, the, the thing that was unusual about that day is I had just returned from a seven day vacation with my wife and two young daughters. Now I hadn't yeah. been on a vacation for years. And uh, I get called into my boss's office and he goes, Mike, your services are no longer required. Oh, wow. No severance, no advance warning, no nothing. So I'm packing up my stuff in my office, putting it into the car, getting into the car, driving home on the freeway, and for whatever reason, I pulled off to the side of the road. And I don't know how long I was actually off on the side of the road. And I thought of two things. One was, what the hell was I going to tell my wife this time? Okay, because like I said, I, I moved around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was already about 100000 in plastic. I was about $100,000 in credit card debt. And I didn't know where the June mortgage payment was coming from. The other thing that popped into my head was a few months earlier to that point, uh, the average American got up in front of the TV cameras at the Senate finance televised hearings in the fall of 97 and basically said how the IRS ruined their lives, padlocked their businesses, all because they owed money. Not because they were a bad person not because they tried to avoid or evade taxes, yeah. simply because they owed money and couldn't pay it. Because you know what? 
life happens. And I always loved the David versus Goliath battle. I was always the underdog my whole life. I always rooted for the underdog. And I said, you know what? I think I can help those people. Now, I never had a client before. I knew nothing about the IRS. Uh, my tax experience consisted of doing a couple of manual returns, 1040s for friends and family. But I just felt in my gut, in my heart, you know what? Shit. I can help these people, man. They're being bulldozed by Goliath. Yeah. And there was no one doing this kind of work at the time. Uh, if you had a tax problem, you usually went to your, your guy who prepared the return uh, or a tax attorney who mucked it up even worse because they didn't do this day in or day out. So I studied the market. I, got, I did everything I could. I read every single marketing book that there was because in accounting or finance, there was no one really teaching marketing and all the marketing was BS. You know, you ran those stupid, dumb yellow page ads, you know, with your name and, you know, established 1968 with like this behind a, uh, a bookcase, you know, <laughs> people shaking hands at the conference table. I think they call that bill, as you and I know, image or brand advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stumbled upon Dan Kennedy, uh, Paul Hartunian, Bill Glazer, and these guys were the de direct response, direct marketing gurus. And after going to the their conferences and seminars and getting every book that Dan Kennedy wrote, uh, light bulbs started going off in my head because I said, if I can take what they teach in direct marketing, direct response marketing, and port it over to people uh, who have IRS problems, I think it could work. Uh, and it was tough at first. It was tough, man. Uh, sure. yeah, yeah. My, my wife and I, we were visiting bankruptcy attorneys. Uh, but here's, and this is very important on the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial path. Yeah. Your partner really needs to be behind you. Your spouse or significant other really needs to be behind you to pursue whatever dream or what's burning in your gut. Because what she said, even though we were 100K in debt, she says, Michael, let's take a, a second on the house. We took a second of $50,000 on the house, and I put it all towards marketing, what I learned. And within a relatively short time, in about 14 months, 15 months, I paid off the 100K in debt, and I paid back the home equity line. Now, like I said, it wasn't easy at first. I was waiting for you know checks to come in the mail and everything yeah. else, but I, I put this system in place. And look, I don't recreate the wheel. I am an average IQ kind of guy, you know, it's not like I'm um, some highfalutin, you know, MBA, PhD. I'm just a street kid from Brooklyn. And what I saw was someone doing what I thought, not only I thought, I saw it was successful. So I just sw swiped and deployed it over, over to my practice. Yeah. And um, I, I started out on my dining room table. Uh, took an office, a small office, 482 square feet, uh, was very successful in negotiating with the IRS because I studied, I was like a workaholic, I'd probably say. I knew the laws and the rules better than they did. And uh, I grew that company to a $23 million company in 12 years. I mean, over a 15-year span, Bill, sure. we, we did over $85 million in, in revenue. Oh, however, that, that's not the story. The real story is we saved average Americans over $100 million off their tax bill by negotiating settlements on their behalf that they were eligible for and that they qualified for. So, you know, what better way to get up in the morning and actually save someone's financial life and make a bunch of money doing it? I mean, that's, for me... Uh, and that's why this practice, IRS representation or tax resolution is so much different than a regular CPA or an accounting practice because yeah. quite honestly, CPA practices by and large suck because you're dealing with tax preparation and you're charging 200 to 300, maybe $400 a return. And I'll tell you what, you can be the best CPA in the world, the best ethics in the world, and you hand someone their 2015 tax return. And it shows they owe twenty-two thousand to the feds and forty-five hundred dollars to the state. They hate you, man. I don't care how good you are. Versus having someone come to you with a mid-five-figure debt or a six-figure dollar debt, and you're able to settle that for a fraction of what they owe. Yeah. You walk on water. You're their hero. 
and the, the the feeling you get inside by doing that and every day is different every case is different it's not like you're doing tax returns and tax returns and tax returns or you're providing unprofitable commoditized accounting and bookkeeping services for a couple hundred bucks a month so it's a very different type practice so those CPAs have a great they have a built-in skill set and a built-in eligibility requirement because only three people on the planet can represent clients before the IRS, CPAs, attorneys, and enrolled agents. But anyway, so uh, I exited that business about two years ago, okay? Yeah. Uh, and that's a story too. I mean... Um, okay. Well, um, let's, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's, uh, we'll circle back to a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, we'll, we'll pick back up with the... Uh, exiting of the business well um let's circle back to you know having your 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 wife by your side and it, it's funny because um you, you probably read this uh think and grow rich napoleon hill yep i read the book 10 years ago i'm rereading it right now um and just in the last 10 years how my thoughts and my views of the world change and just seeing how much uh, how right he was about a lot of things yes. but he also said that behind every every successful person is a successful partner a personal partner yes wife you know yes. husband, um partner and I, I took that, I think that I took that one piece of information and it kind of subconsciously grew with me, but I can really see how, how important it is to have your um, significant other on, on the same side as you. And uh, my wife and I, we support each other. There are things like her, her goals and her dreams and the, and the diabetes coaching and space and helping people empower people with diabetes, how I back her hundred percent and I have my, my entrepreneurial you know, yep. endeavors, next level life. And with my, my, my new um, author thing that I'm, I'm doing with writing books and she supports me and we just support each other. Um, how did you guys come to that? Uh, is it something you worked on? Is it something that just was natural for you? Uh, it was more natural for her than it was for me. Yeah. And I don't know if that's an ego thing or a male thing or what have you. So in the last number of years, I've been consciously working on it. Uh, and the more I do, the more I, I open up and let her in and the more I give her credit and the more I acknowledge her, it's like a power team. You know, the, we're all, we're both on the same page and we have very different skill sets. Uh, you know, I like to be the front man. I like to be the face of the company and do the marketing and do the selling. Mm -hmm. And she likes to do the, um, the copy, she, you know, she's a copy editor or a journalist by trade. So she does the copy. She does the newsletter. Uh, but together, we know that when we're together, when we're on the same page, everything is so much better. But I have to I'll be honest with you. I have to I have to work on it. I think it's um, something that you need to consciously always work on and give credit where credit is due. Because I got to tell you, a lot of her ideas that I may balk at at first only because why didn't I think of it first? <laughs> Make us money. Sure. I mean, and, and you know, the, the uh, more I realize that the better uh, it is for us. And uh, you know, we're putting on an event in August that she's in charge of. I mean, she's in charge of a lot of stuff. She has great ideas and they make money for us. And I support her as much as I can. As a matter of fact, I want to bring her up on stage at one of our next events. I think you because, should. Yeah, yeah, I think she adds a lot to the a lot to the party. Yeah, definitely. I think the the key takeaway there is something that you whether it's natural uh, or it's not natural, but it's something that you have to be uh, conscious of and something that you have to to, to work on. And it starts with appreciation um, and gratitude, gratitude, and also believing in in, in one another. Um, yes. You know, having that that baseline of saying that I I trust you and I love you enough that. Um, I'm going to support you in, in your efforts, even if they might sound crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm there for you. Yeah. So. Awesome. So, um, we talk about influences on the show, um, you know, speakers or in this case, you mentioned a few of them, Dan Kennedy, Bill, Bill Glazer. Um, and, uh, I, I see, I'm actually not part of a GKIC. I know you, you talk, you sing their, their praises, but can you yep. just, um, they came into your life. You sought them out, and you. And one thing about you that I love is one thing that I can relate, um, and Daniel, I can relate, is, is speed of implementation. Yeah. You know, anytime I see you learn a skill, I might see you at a, at a, at a training conference, and we'll, we'll come back, and you're boom, you're putting that into place that that next day, that next week. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one of the my my key um, suggestions is is to really adopt the mindset of of speed of implementation and oh, yeah. orientation. Um. And so, just uh, tell us a little bit about about Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer. 
how that affected you back then. And also maybe, I mean, you were saying, you know, when you found them, it was like 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And how has that evolved um, throughout the years? Yeah, well, as you know, I mean, I also, as, as you, uh, follow uh, intensely Brendan Bouchard. Yep. Okay, and he's been my newest, one of my newest influences for the past two, two years. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing now, this whole information marketing and coaching business, is because three people in October 2013, three people unrelated to each other told me, Mike, you need to read Millionaire Messenger. Now, if that's not a God shot or a whisper, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what is. So I read it. And I actually have a, I made it into a workbook. I was like so intense on it. I, I took notes. I put it, I mean, I have a whole workbook on Millionaire Messenger and I thought he was talking to me. And I based what I'm doing now off of that book. So Brendan has been one of my biggest influences with regard to the expert space and what I was, what we already have, because each of us have knowledge and expert status with what we have up here. Yeah. Each of us do. I agree. So this was a way he showed us, or showed me how to bring that out to the world. Uh, so I combined that with the GKIC part because the GKIC part teaches me to do the implement it tomorrow, you know, speed of implementation, which, um, you know, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. Yeah. You, you know, there's an old saying, you don't coast uphill. So, um, you know, I, I, and it's a feeling of, of um, accomplishment. Even if you do the smallest thing for five minutes in a day, even if you spend five minutes moving yourself forward, whether it's personal development or in business, working on your business versus in your business, I mean, that's really where the light bulb comes on. That's where you get the exhilaration. That's where the speed of implementation comes in. Yeah. You know what? The people... The faster you implement, it's funny how this works. The larger your bank deposits become. I mean, it's. I mean, if you don't implement, you're. You're. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. So, and you know, the other thing too is people need to know that it does take money to make money. You know, I got. Um, uh, I, I got a Facebook message earlier this morning where uh, this woman, who wants to join my program. Uh, she's a CPA. She wants to make $30,000 a month with tax resolution, which is very, very doable. That's only about five to seven clients a month. And she said, I only have $500 a month. And I, I she said, how can I, uh, where do I deploy $500 a month to get $30,000 a month in business? And I point blank told her, you're not. Yeah. The simple truth is, is it takes money to make money. So, uh, but you have to have that burning desire again, going back to Napoleon Hill, you have to have that burning desire and motivation, uh, and, and just do it and burn the bridges behind you. When I say burn the bridges, I'm not talking about burning friendships. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. You know, Cortez in, in South America, when his guys invaded that Island, the reason why they won the battle, even though they were outnumbered was he burnt the ships, set them on fire because he said, guys, we ain't going home. We either we're we're taking this island or we're dying on it. But there's no way back home. Oh, yeah. Sometimes that's that's how you have to look at it. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with that. There's um there's two ways looking at it or, or two ways of approaching it. And some people are, are working in that nine to five job and they want to do their own you know a lifestyle entrepreneur business something that they're really passionate about. Um, and sometimes they think they need to you know quit and jump leap and that, and that will appear. And, and so I, I always say that, you know, that that's five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, you could build that net at the yes. same time. Um, but then again, if you're a hundred percent passionate and motivated, or perhaps you're on the side of the road and you're, it's May 17th, you yep. got that date down preset. Well, then maybe it's time to make that move. And those sometimes people will burn, burn your boats for you and just take exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. You, see, at that point I knew I could never, ever work for anybody again. It just, I, I just wasn't going to do it. So I had to figure something out and that, that came to me to, to do, but I, I couldn't work for anybody. Yeah. So do we, um, the, let's, let's, let's take it back a little bit to, uh, where we're saying you, you exited, uh, 
I guess the larger business or what's what what happened in the last few years that that second part well, of the story that what you happened was you know um the reason why the company was so successful was because of direct response uh lead generation marketing and even more importantly positioning you know i did my own radio spots i was the one who went on tv i did the radio interviews the tv interviews and uh my partner at the time wanted to uh prepare the company for sale and he said that you need to take a back seat uh, because people need to buy the uh, potential suitors need to look at the company and they don't need to look at you uh, I mean not be saying it a uh, hundred percent but so you know look he was my partner uh, I was running the show for all these years I figured you know what let's try it let's try it a different way Let's try it a different way, even though in my heart of hearts, I knew it wasn't the right move. So the company became generic. It became plain vanilla. It became mm. like all the other companies out there. And sales started to, to level off and decline. And I said, we, we got to go back to the other way. And he wasn't willing. So, you know, we kind of we kind of went our separate ways. Yeah. I mean, once again, that's a, uh, but that dual one door closes, another door opens, right? Oh, yeah absolutely absolutely one door yeah the, oh the other door and it took me a long time look i was frustrated for years for three or four years at my company this was going on for three or four years and i knew bill i was going to do something i used to say to myself i'm going to do something on the internet but i didn't know what the heck that meant i yeah. really didn't know what it meant i didn't even know this business existed that you and I know the the world we know and it wasn't until I read Brendan Bouchard's book millionaire messenger that it, it hit me this is what I'm gonna do and I read that book October 2013 March 31st 2014 I exited my business you knew you knew and that's a uh, that's where I met where, where do we meet we that must have met at uh experts academy experts academy in uh um, yes march, march of 2000 two <laughs> wow years ago. so we met right when you were breaking up um yes. you know kind of the door closing and, and door opening and then yes. um give a little bit about how i mean so you had your your basic experience in this area but now you have this these new tools and um i started a mastermind call and basically an accountability call after that event so if everybody doesn't know experts academy it's about 500 600 700 people maybe a thousand people now it's growing but it's a four-day event put on by Bernard Bouchard where he basically teaches you to you know how to package your your information yes. your expertise partner promote and get it out there and start an expert business yes and that was something that I'd already been doing for for a while but but Brandon kind of gave tools and, and gave it a, a set like hey here's the best practices so I was like holy crap like this yep. is amazing you you literally have to go to it, it tells a story you literally have to go to like 10 different seminars to get what you would learn in that in that one yes. event and um, I put together an, an accountability call where every week or two weeks people that I met that you know wanted to call in and say how what kind of progress they were making It's one of the things I like to do to connect and stay connected and within a few weeks like you were you weren't calling in not because you weren't trying to stay accountable but because your your stuff was just taken off you were too yes. busy right yeah <laughs> so what what's happened in the last two years where, where are you at now I know you're talking about events but let's um can you kind of uh, walk us through some of that like first event how how things what was the trajectory sure. Sure. Uh, well, we 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 did. A, I did like what they call a micro launch, which I learned at G K G K I C. And you know, I had no list. I had no database. I had no one uh, that I could email to to come on to a live cast webinar. But uh, I did so happen to be in the right place at the right time, seventeen years ago, and helped pioneer the tax resolution industry. So a lot of my peers. Uh, joined me on that live cast. Not only were they on uh, interviewing me and me interviewing them, but they emailed to their list. So I can't stress the importance of um, bringing on other folks, other JV partners to help promote yourself uh, in exchange for compensation for uh, to them. And that launched me, Bill. I mean, we sold 400 people within a four hour uh, time frame. Uh, so that put the business on the map and what was really cool that um, the product was sold and I sold it dirt cheap. I, I'm, I was like crazy. People thought I was crazy, but we did it with a forced continuity portion. Uh, 
Mm. So everyone who bought the product on that live cast got two months free membership. Uh, and then when the 61 days was over, they were paying two ninety seven a month to be in the membership. So, <clears throat> but then I learned about churn and, uh, people opting out and canceling. Uh, and so we went up real quick, leveled out and started to go down because I wasn't doing any other, I didn't know what to do to keep that, keep that going. Yeah. Yeah, create creating and campaign. If you're not creating it and campaigning, you're 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 falling off, right? Exactly. So I learned that kind of the hard way. So now we got you know a campaign or two running every month. The, you know the membership. You know I have our uh, my own mastermind. This is the second year running it. We got uh, twelve people in it. The first meetings uh, in a few weeks, actually in May in Los Angeles. We have a gold level membership um, at 297 a month, which we give a tremendous amount of value. And we have about 200 people in that now. Yep. Um, uh, we're on this launch we're doing, which is a brand new product. We're probably going to introduce another level of membership between the 297 and the high mastermind amount. Uh, but yeah, it's campaigning, it's doing webinars, it's doing teleseminars. It's, um, you know, joining up with folks like you and, and my other JV partners. Uh, it's being invited on to speak at other folks' event. Um, so we're, we're busy, excited, just, you know, look, we're on a journey. We're on this journey. We don't know exactly which way it's going to go. It's scary and exhilarating at the same time. Um, and, you know, if I... And it is scary. There, it, there are times when I'm in fear. Uh, but here's how I look at fear these days. Fear is a mile high, a mile wide, but paper thin. There you go. So all you got to do is poke your finger through it and you're on the other side. I mean, because we make this fear thing like huge in our heads. 99% of the time, it never materializes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of faith. We have a lot of faith in, uh, in the man upstairs uh, and a lot of trust. And uh, that's what we're, we're banking on. Yeah. No, and I'm, 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 I'm smiling. I, I resonate uh, completely with your, your message, but it actually is coming up with a kind of a, a, a word anagram with, with journey earlier. And, and journey, whatever journey you're taking, entrepreneurial journey or whatever journey, it begins and ends with joy. J O yes. good. Why? That's good. And then also, uh, Oh, I like that. I, thank you. I, I have fun with that. And then you start mo moving things around, but don't forget that when you're on your journey, if you, you have to enjoy, cause if you rearrange the letters, E N J O Y, you are enjoy your journey as well. So that's very important. <laughs> so, so this is great. We're, um, probably about five minutes here. Let's, um, you've shared just through your wisdom and, and your storytelling. I'm sure a lot of people have gotten, gotten some, some great tips or, or some action items, but, uh, let's say in the, in the tax business or the, the tax resolution service space, um, let's say we have some CPAs or some individual who, yep. what, who, who are you targeting with that, with that business? And then what's one thing that you could kind of just impart of them to, to be aware of in general? Right. So my, I mean, my ideal client, my ideal customer is someone who's been in practice five or 10 years or more, um, but is struggling. They're, they're, they're struggling. No one has shown them a different way to do other than what they teach in college. I mean, they don't teach resolution work in college. The only place you can find how to deal with the IRS on a collection basis is if you get an LLM, which is an advanced tax degree, uh, if you're an attorney and they only teach one course. So this stuff isn't really taught. So I'm looking for, I mean, my ideal client is someone who wants to unlock or, or, or get out of the shackles that they're chained to their desk, that they're working in their business. They can't get away. It's a one man show. They have no freedom. I mean, they didn't go to school and pass the CPA exam to charge $75 to $150 an hour. And that's what the average CPA charges out there. So, you know, we show them how to get in a mindset where to value what they're worth, because a lot of folks underestimate or undervalue what they're worth. And I think it's a mindset thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's or it could be someone who's actually successful who wants to add another lucrative revenue stream to their practice. Uh, because adding tax resolution to one's practice, 
uh, also adds other revenue streams to it. Let's say you have a business client who has IRS problems but hasn't prepared a profit and loss statement in a long time. So now you get the financial statement preparation piece. A lot of accountants are licensed to sell insurance. Uh, by placing someone with health insurance also ensures they get a much better deal with their IRS settlement because the IRS allows dollar for dollar as an allowable expense insurance. You have to have health insurance. So it, it, it dovetails and adds a lot of other ancillary revenue streams by doing tax resolution. Um, and it's mainstream now. Uh, it used to be out in the dark or behind the black box. And we had a bad name for a while because there were a lot of firms like Tax Masters, J.K. Harris, Ronnie Lynn Deutsch, American Tax Relief that were all shut down by the state's attorney general or the Federal Trade Commission because they were taking people's money and not doing the work. Hmm. Uh, but that's about three, four years now behind us. So the industry has matured, if you will. Uh, and if you're an accountant or an attorney or an enrolled agent that has a tax practice, I think you'd be crazy not to at least explore adding this because I guarantee that any accountant out there, they have two or three tax resolution cases sitting right under their nose in their database that they don't even know of because the people who have the problem don't know that their guy actually does this type of work. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered. Also, no, no, that, that's good. It's also, it's, uh, I just, um, from a, a business owner perspective, I've gone through a number of uh, accountants that yep. are very good. I finally found some uh, accountants that are they're great. They're really good at what they do. But we're we're recently going through an issue with the with the IRS. Something not a super large deal, but something that you know we're we were you know we're, we're penalized for something that we we would we did what we were supposed to do. A mistake was made from a right. former accountant, and we were penalized. And even though my current accountants are they're great. They send something out as a letter, and then you send. You said, "Hey, I got this letter that you would send," and yours was so specific, knew the code, knew what to say. Yes. And I, I, I would think that as an accountant, they would love to have that skill set to be able to better serve their clients. Because if it takes six months to fix this problem with what they did versus one month with your letter, um, they, I, I'm a way more satisfied client as well. So that's that's a little client <laughs> plug, but it's, it's a for real situation. No, it's 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 true. I mean, uh, look, there are CPAs out there who are deathly afraid to call the IRS themselves. Uh, but you know, knowledge is power, and to have that, you know, they already have the skill set. It's such a unique opportunity. Only three people can do this kind of work. They already have the skill set. They just need to build on the skill set. Uh, and help they can help a lot more of their clients if they knew how to do this how to do this work and and you know we teach all of that we educate on that uh, there's so many resources out there today for the technical part uh, and I partner with a lot of them so you know if someone wants to get into it the resources are available they can be in business in a ver very relatively short period of time yeah no, that's great and we'll do we'll post a uh all your links uh, for yourself or your company and social media built below this, uh, whatever the video is on Facebook or on, on YouTube. But um, we're going to wrap things up. But I'd, I'd like to, to give you the, the, the floor of the mic, you know, for a minute or two. What's, what should people pay attention to? What should, what's coming up next for you? How can they find more of information that you are providing? Sure. Well, if they go to our website, we got a bunch of free uh, videos, a bunch of free special reports, and that's Roz, R O Z strategies.com um, there's a wealth of information there you know look check out the website uh, we're actually doing uh, a free webinar coming up on March 31st next week that people can opt in at uh, don't ask me what the link is it's on Facebook uh, I can't think of the link offhand uh, but if you go to actually if you go to tax resolution training.com uh, you'll see the the link for for that tax resolution training.com I think has the webinar link um, you know, and what I would tell people is if you have, you know, a burning desire in your gut, you know, follow your dream, follow your, your dream. Look, there's no, and it's not going to be rosy and it's not going to be an easy path, but if you follow your dream, it's going to be well worth it. And I like what you said about journey. Uh, I love that, you know, and you know, people, People should do what they what they really want to do. Yeah, I and, love it. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on, and I think this is gonna be one of the uh, one of the shows that people are gonna get a lot of 
of, of benefit, not just like I said from the, the technical how to, but you know, also from the kind of the wisdom of, of your experience and, and journey. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up. Thank you for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and for our audience out there, if you if you like what you saw, give a give a thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, give a subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. All right, take care. Take care, Bill.